Labour Party governorship candidate in Lagos State, Variable Road Survivor, has continued to describe the March 18 governorship election in the state as unfair and not credible election, which was marred with violence. He also stated that the implications of the election that took place in the state is not healthy for the democracy of Nigeria, especially the use of ethnic bigotry to create hate and violence between Yorubas in Lagos and Igbos, who were mostly attacked by all progressive Congress thugs, who publicly declared that all votes must be for the ruling party in the state, the All Progressive Congress. Joining us now on this show is Baribol Roots Viva, Labour Party candidate in Lagos State. Thank you very much uh, for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the show. We have three simple questions mm. which can help us set the tone for this conversation. Okay. How did it go? How is it going? Mm. What's next for you? Well, how did it go was the elections were a complete sham. Um, I, I feel that the ruling party in Lagos declared war on Lagosians because as early as 5, 6 in the morning, parts of Alimosho voting address that happening, um, thugs had been imported into Lagos from outside of Lagos. So you had a situation where a polling unit, you had almost 30, 40 thugs per polling unit in certain parts of Lagos State. Local governments like Ojo, elections did not happen because they literally just scattered everywhere, set polling units results on fire, right? Um, so it was marred the law of violence. And there's an idea that this was an ethnic coloration. But when you look deeper, that wasn't what it was. That was the boogeyman that hid, that helped them hide what they were trying to do, which was create, almost literally want to create a one-party state, in the sense that even if you say Badiboro's rival is half Igbo, Badiboro's rival does not speak Yoruba and you don't like that, Funsho Dorati speaks Yoruba and is full Yoruba, right? And many other Yoruba candidates, so why did it have to be vote APC if it's about the Yoruba agenda, right? So you disenfranchise so many people. And this was not just in the majority um, dominated non indigenous parts of Lagos, it was all across Lagos State. I'm talking about Ikeja, Koshofe, Shomolu. We lost a life in Shomolu, lost a life in Koshofe, right? And these are places that are predominantly Yoruba. Ali Mosho as well, so much violence everywhere, right? So that's how we went. Um, how it's going is we're focused on our petition right now um, that has been submitted, um, challenging the process, challenging the credibility of the elections. And also, we're focused on giving um, support and succor to the many people that were affected by this violence. As a man that cannot walk again, I'm happy that we'll be able to pay for his therapy so that he's doing physiotherapy to be able to walk again. About five people have lost their sight. Two have lost sight in one eye. Um, well, three have lost sight in one eye. The other two are still trying to recover their sight. About 20 people still have bullet pellets in their bodies and we're not only exposing this to public, but we're also focused on giving them the um, support that they need because they're going through a very hard time, all just because they wanted to um, cast their vote. And finally, moving forward, we're also going to the ICC because we don't believe that, you see, this, forget, this is not about Gbadiboro Revival anymore or Labour Party, it's not about our democracy. And I say this, but they try to twist my words. I don't want a I love Lagos. I don't want Lagos to be um, torn apart by violence. What I'm saying is for any normal person looking at this scenario, if this scenario is allowed to stand, right, anybody that is planning for future elections will not be thinking about debates anymore. They'll be thinking that these people are going to do the same violence again, so I must come with violence. And that's why we must resist this. The people that find this ethnic quarrels, find this ethnic tension, because there's a danger. If you look at Hitler's Germany, first it starts with the words, and you other people. So they are not us. So it's okay for bad things to happen to them, right? And then the violence happens. So we must take a stand against this for our democracy. All right, thank you very much. So you're saying you're doing this for posterity's sake. Yes. Because a number of people have said, stop making an issue out of it. Let us move forward. Let us heal. Let us begin to fix Lagos rather than going back to the past. So just to get it on record that the reason you're doing this is it's obviously for, for a sense of justice yeah. justice and for posterity. And you know, healing cannot happen where there's no justice. 
You cannot say you want peace, but want peace of a graveyard, right? That's what they want. They want to perpetrate these things and then gaslight and pretend like it did not happen so they don't deal with the consequences. But it only, met, it only metastasis, it only gets worse. Right. You see the situation... So like uh, a cancer, just... Yes, it's, it's like look at NSARS, they try to sweep it under the carpet. Mm. That morphed into something else. And you just keep, as long as you keep trying to suppress people and injustice is there, it's only mm. going to get worse. And this is how, you know, the things that are happening all across the world, that's, this is how it starts. Okay, so my question is, I want to dig deeper into your claims of the number of people who have been affected. Yes, yes. Because these are, these are, you know, cause for concern. Yes. You talk about people who've gone blind. You yes. talk about people who cannot walk. Yes. Um, when you walked in, I, I, jo I jokingly talked about your outfit because yes. you become quite synonymous with wearing white. a white yeah. outfit. And you said that you were mourning. mourning. And yes. then you, ex you know, trying to expand for further on that in terms of the lives that were lost. Yes. What people would question would be, what is the authenticity of this? Because we're still trying to get the authenticity of the numbers of people who were killed during yeah. NSARS, and yeah. there's still that debate around that. So yeah. that's going to be the question to you, that where, how did you, who are these people mm. that you're saying lost their lives? Yeah. Was it directly as a result of the elections? Were there other reasons? What's, your, what's the facts? What's, what's the evidence of your so, of So what, um, claim? fortunately, what we have now, we're shooting documentary on all of this that we're going to expose and we're going to put in the news so people can see and judge for themselves. So it will not be a he said, she said type of situation. We have incident reports across almost 700 to 800 polling units of violence on particular people. Right? And if you follow me on social media, you see I've been visiting these people. These are not ghosts, right? Are you they see, were they bystanders? Were they polling units? They were um, polling officials? Unit agents. Were they, agents? They were people that went to go and vote. They were Labour Party officials. And if you follow my Twitter, you see that, okay, in Shomulu, in Koshofe, in Agege, I was here today. In Ojo, in Amor Dauphin, I was there the other day, right? Um, in Ikeja, there's a man that we were able to pay for. His leg was fractured. Right, so you have to do an operation to put it back. We have all the hostel bills, right? And we've also gotten them to start submitting police reports. So we have all this information. So we, we've learned from the answer situation. So that's why we're compiling it and we'll put it out as a proper um, body of work. Okay, let me ask. You referred to ICC. Yes. You said as part of next steps, you are considering going to ICC. Yeah. Well, it's on record that some Nigerians have gone to the ICC, yeah. specifically Professor Christa, mm. who reported um, Mr. Bayo Nonuga yes. of the uh, APC yes. to ICC. So if we say you are going to the ICC, on what grounds? So, okay, and sorry. who are the individuals, specific individuals, uh, that you are going to report to the ICC? The ICC, Article 15, mm -hmm. you know, allows people, groups, to come and report people. Yes. If they find me written it, yeah. the office of the prosecutor will look into it. Exactly. So who are those persons that you have identified that yes. you want to so, report so, to the ICC? So for us, um, we've already written, this is not considering, we've written to the prosecutor already. of the ICC. We've done that. Who are the people? That. So people that were on that list were people like MC Lomo, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Ononuga, mm -hmm. um, all the people that were instigating hatred against and profile, ethnic profiling, right? And all the people also that were involved in violence on that day. So there are a number of people that might not be popular, but we know for a fact you that they were instrumental. You do include the traditional rulers that announced Solo Festival to check. Well, the, yes. Yes, we did. Like who? We did. I, I believe that, um, and also for the violence that happened in front of the Onuru's Palace. Onuru? Yes, and in Legushi. The, the, the Legushi is also on the list. I believe so. I will, I'll have to confirm this. But it, it, it was an objective petition. It was not a subjective one. If you did anything to cause people to be worried, to intimidate or suppress people, or to enable violence, we are reporting you. This is the thing. Again, I said, in four years' time, another election is going to happen. And elections are always, when you prepare for election, ele an election, you are always preparing based on what happened previously. So if our kings are calling Uru during the day, I, I'm, not sure, I'm sure you're familiar, you know that Uru is not supposed to be during the day. Of course. That's a desecration of a right that has been old in Yoruba culture for a very long time. 
right? And you desecrate it by doing it during the day. Then it also shows how serious you are taking the rights that are supposed to be the custodian of. I'm sorry to say, but, you know, we also have to start speaking truth to power if we want to move this country forward. Yeah, but okay, that's ICC. Uh, under the Rome Statute of yeah. 2002, dealing with acts of aggression, crimes against humanity, genocide. How far have you gone with, you know, petitions before the uh, uh, local authority in this regard, the election petitions tribunal? Yes, um, we've compiled our petition and we've submitted it. Um, and we've, we have a very good case. So I'm, I'm very positive. I, I always make decisions based on faith rather than fear. And I believe that when people have died, especially when they were threatened with the whole oral situation, and if you've seen the videos where they are literally cursing anybody that's not going to vote for the ruling party, right? I'm not sure if you've seen that video, but it exists, right? And they came out in spite of that and voted for a young man who did not give them any money to do that. You, you owe it to them to fight for that mandate as far as you can. So we're going to do that and... We have a good case, and um, we're going to push it all the way. Okay, just to clarify, when you say fight for that mandate, are you the petition before the election tribunal? Again, no. Is it for the process, to challenge the process, or the results? Because what the, the numbers suggest that there's quite a significant distance between you and the winner of the gubernatorial elections in Lagos State, Governor um, Somolu. So... What they're saying is that there's no case there. It was obvious that people voted for him. It, so which, what are you presenting the, to the tribunal? The, and if you're saying you're challenging the outcome, mm. then what's your justification, bearing in mind the number difference between you and Governor Somolu? Okay, so um, I, I laugh because it's actually sad how um, this election has just completely destroyed the reputation of INEC. Which I'm sure if you remember when I've come on here, I'll talk about INEC, electronic yeah. transmission of votes, like they've done so well, all of that. So we have on record, um, first, incidences of violence where all our polling agents and PDP agents were chased away and results were written. And we can prove that we have testimony that can come on that. Um, areas of a lot of violence where elections pretty much did not happen, right? We're going to prove that as well. And... We're also focused on now showing the difference if these things did not happen, right? So we're challenging the process and we're challenging the results. Well, you know, you said one of your concerns is how to check the uh, emergence of a one-party state. Exactly. In Lagos State. Yes. <laughs> but Lagos State, <laughs> since 1999, has been uh, a one-party state. Mm. Now that uh, that one party, one political group, has produced the uh, president of uh, Nigeria, president-elect, who will be sworn in on May 29. While you are pursuing your matter, you know, uh, at state and federal level in the courts. Any hope that anybody very soon can stop Lagos from mm. remaining a one-party state under the teamship of Ashwa Jubala I, I think what Lagos has suffered from for a long time was a lack of credible opposition. I think that, um, unfortunately, the opposition party only tried to out Goliath Goliath, and you can never out Goliath Goliath. What we came with that gave us the results that we did was a completely new strategy, a completely new voter demographic, a completely new ideology, right? And that's why we did so well. And I feel that, I mean, by now you would have found Typically, the candidates would have congratulated the governor. He would have traveled for holidays somewhere, you know, and he would just go quiet. But that's not the case with us. Um, for us, we are the future. And our decisions that are being made are going to affect us and our children, right? So we must do the best we can to ensure that it's not just about this election. It's about the precedence that's being set by this election and how we want it to now affect the next election, right? Because... I want to know that we've given our all to make sure that in 2027 we'll have a peaceful election in Lagos State. And I don't think that's asking too much, right? Because what happened in Lagos was a war on Lagosians. No matter how they want to color it or muddy the waters, in Ikui, there were Yoruba people that were beaten and affected by thugs and hooligans that, were, that came in 
to the place in Parkview, right? So even, I mean, look at what happened in VGC as well, right? And the complicity, complicity of INEC as well in this process has to be taken, taken up, right? So that if they want to try anything again next time, they will do things differently. Or at least be more, give a perception of equity, fairness, and justice. Yeah. Not this brazen rape of our democracy in Lagos State. All right, so I want to go back to a statement you talked about in terms of credible opposition. Yes. One of the strengths of a democracy, a good democracy, is opposition. Yes. A strong opposition. In Lagos State, that had been PDP. Mm -hmm. That had been the main opposition. So are you saying that PDP was not a credible opposition? And why would you say that, bearing in mind that you were in PDP before moving on to Labour Party? Yes, yes. And then, and then beyond that, I'd like you to also speak about, um, because we looked in, the, in, in the introduction, we talked about ethnic bigotry. Yes. I want to ask in terms of post-election. So some people have said it was a, it's a political tool that was used before mm -hmm. elections. Unfortunately, what we've seen is that it's possibly exacerbated yes. post-election. Yes. I'd like you to give your assessment of yes. it and how we can begin to tackle this because people are listening. Oh, yeah. I mean, even comments around it. People have said, you know, now calling you by your middle name almost seems like a slur, mm. which shouldn't be the case. So I'd like you to speak to that yes. in terms of what the reality has been and then have there been any threats to your security or to your life? Yes, yes. So, Indeed. so um... In terms of a credible opposition party, I, I feel that because the PDP, this is my own humble analysis of the situation, because the PDP had gone through two major crises. One was the murder of Funcho Williams. The second one was this whole conversation of being able to take all the Southwest but leaving Lagos for Tinubu because Elijah Atiku Abubakar was in charge of the, at the time. I think those two things have influenced the psychology within the party. And a lot of people push, push to a point and then they go quiet, right? And then you have candidates that will emerge as governor and you won't hear about from them for four years and they come up when it's time for elections again. That's no opposition, right? So the quality of candidates you put forward matters. The why of that candidate matters, right? And that's the, what will keep them going. So that's what I mean by credible opposition. It's the staying power outside of election season. Right, and being able to be focused on that. Um, the second question which you talk on, which is um, ethnic profiling yes. and bigotry. How has it, is, has it improved? Is it worse? No, no, What's it's worse situation now. It's worse now because the propaganda machine has gone on overdrive, at least on social media. I feel that what they've seen is that this movement is the future. So they are trying their best to discredit it as much as they can. But then the problem is that there are real life consequences to these things. I'm saying that I know 23 people. This is not that I heard. I've gone to visit them at Navy, Navy Hospital in Ojo. They have pellets, bullet pellets in their bodies. Why? Because someone just came there and was shooting at them, saying they're the ones that called the army to prevent the movement or to prevent the uh, voter intimidation that we're doing. I've seen them. I have, if you go on my social media, you see pictures where I'm looking at the x-ray of bullet pellets in their chin or in their neck, right? And some of these people have lost their lives, right? So there are real life consequences to these things. And it's very sad because the, I, I say the culture of Lagos, the culture of Lagosians, our culture is one of openness and welcoming. That's why we've prospered. It's not because they are worried or the ego are just done everything themselves. No, we created an enabling environment for people to come in and prosper. That's our culture, right? And even the Yoruba culture in itself is not one of suppression and intimidation. Igbo people, the Southeast have been neighbors for us for centuries. Can you remember any recorded war between the Yoruba and the Igbos? Compared to like the Yoruba, Benin, the Yoruba, and the Oba of Benin Kingdom, or the Yoruba and the Fulani. There are historic markers where there was war, but this has never happened in war across Niger. So it's very unfortunate because you have people that have come into the state, they've invested, they add so much to the GDP of the state, they're employers of labor, they're taxpaying members, and there's this vitriol, so much vitriol. Even as at this week, there was local government chairman, so in Ojo, I believe, that was locking up shops so that people could not get in. I saw the video. I've not been there to confirm it, but I saw the video. You know, so we need to move away from that. And what I'm preaching now is healing, right? At least in our mind.
because there must be healing that happens by the government or by the legal um, arm of the law, yeah. right? Arm of government, yeah. right? Um, so for us, is reminding people about our affinities. Yeah. Because when you actually look historically, we are from the same roots, right? Ukute, ukute. The stone in Yoruba, Nibo. Ifa, afa. Like you look at the linguistics and similarities, we are one people, right? So it's to heal that and just ensure that, um, sorry, I mean, I meant Okute Okuta. Okuta. Um, it's to heal that and make sure that people can actually start to see past this thing again. And the idea of this, um, this tribal sort of ethnic baiting I believe that, and that's why it's important to go to the ICC, I believe that when people see that there are consequences to these things, they'll be a lot more careful. Threat to okay. your life. Sorry, to. Threat, threat to my life, yes, yes. yes. I'm yeah. constantly getting that. I, I was with um, His Excellency Peter Obi about three days ago, and he also told me how he gets these things. We travel, go away, be quiet, all of that. Um, my mother is constantly calling me to tell me that there are different people threatening and all of that. But, you know, I think it would be very... It will be a disaster that so many people came out to vote for you, so many people chose hope over fear, and you just disappear and go quiet. Well, I saw your mom on television standing up for you, <laughs> and that was really nice. Thank but you. let me ask you something personal. You've been severely criticized okay. after your visit to the uh, above Lagos. Mm. The main criticism was that, oh, all the elders that went with you, including your dad, removed their cap. You stood in front of the Oba. Uh, you didn't uh, kneel down. You had your cap on your head. I know there are some persons. I'm old enough to know no, that in some situations, there are persons who, in certain situations, don't remove their caps, mm. even when you are in front mm. uh, of a traditional ruler. But you were criticized yeah. uh, for that. So no, um, you know, that's what's your reaction? Yeah, that's what, propaganda. Was it? No, 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 no. They showed the video. No, they showed the Where part of the video. They and you still no, they showed the part on. of the video they wanted you to see. As soon as I walked in, I took off my cap and I prostrated for the over. Okay. That one showed that video. After I got up, I put my cap back on and I sat down. Then there was a point where they were talking and they said my name and I stood up to listen because they were talking about me. But the first thing I did when I went in front of the over, I took off my cap and I prostrated. I did. And what we have to do, I'll go tell my media team, we need to find that clip and put that out there, right? Uh, well, that would be after the fact. It doesn't Your matter. media team should have done that promptly. I, I agree because with you. there was this general impression that you yeah. were disrespecting yeah, no, the throne. No, 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 never. Okay. I respect the throne okay. of the university. Okay, let's talk about propaganda. Mm. Because you talk about um, propaganda and we've seen, he said, she said, Twisting, deep fakes. Yes. What is really true? We've 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 had a lot of fake news banded around, oh, yes. and a lot of narratives being skewed in yes. favor of certain, um, you know, ideology or certain to favor a certain part of perhaps political parties. Yes. How are you fighting against propaganda? How do you speak to your people in terms of? How to, you know, like um, the example that Dr. Bati just gave, you, were, you didn't respond promptly. Mm. So you mm. allow that fly and we take a lot for you to yeah. reverse what has already been established in the mm. minds of people. How are you fighting back against it? How are you pushing out truth against propaganda that's been set? So, so for instance, like we talked about the number of people that have been killed. We're doing a documentary on that that is fact-based and we put it out there. The truth of the matter is lies will always travel fast. But the truth will always catch up. Like, you lie on it to catch up and overcome. At the time, there were so many things. I was dealing with, um, my name is Chinidu, and my father never married my mother, yeah. and my father accepted me 17 years after. You know, so, Some people said so, you were raised in the East. Uh, they said I was yeah. raised in the East. I mean, there's nothing wrong with no, that. No, but, but I was not. And you, at that point, you see my family got together and did a documentary. They put all our family pictures and lineage and all of that. Then there was this one about Oba prostrating in front of Oba wearing your cap. It was just so much. I was an IPOB leader. I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's ridiculous. Oh, Essas that, that I funded the burning of BRT buses. See, I, I like to think that I, I am at least moderately smart. Now, if I'm criticizing the government for inflating budgets and buying things much higher than that actually costs, I will not give them the opportunity to make more money. Right? Because they will buy more buses and pad it. 
right, and make more money. So I will not do that. The BRT buses are our commonwealth. And it's a shame that people burn those down. It's, in fact, everything that happened after the shooting at innocent civilians is a complete shame because we worked against ourselves. All right. Well, thank you. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you, you so much, much sir. So I want to, to see you again. Thank you for having me. And we wish you well. Thank you. As you, thank you. continue with the, yes. the war. The war. <laughs> to use your expression. Yes, yes. Thank you.